brother-in-law just got diagnosed with lymphoma and he was like he's like you know he's like people you know christians don't realize that you have to go through fires and he kept talking about fire and how as a christian you have to go through fires because every single time it's like what you guys were talking about like the the um he's like because he's like and i even see it like just watching them like from afar he's like i see how god is just like building like them and like like making them stronger with their faith and i just thought that was really cool because it was like exactly what we've been talking about and yeah. i told him he was like oh my gosh he's like i just sent like he was talking about other stuff too but it was really neat that is cool. cool. Like the purification y kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it might be one little thing, but then yeah, yeah. Have downtime and, and then he goes, go you know, on. He go, yeah. And he's like, you know, people want to pray for healing. And I get that. He goes, but I have such a hard time praying for that because he's like, I know that God is so much bigger and so much more like there's so much more to every scenario that we know of he's like and i always just pray like your will be done and i'm like oh my gosh that's exactly yep. how i feel yep. because like i feel like even though we want like this to happen or this yeah. person to be better it's like no like god has so much more planned for a situation that we don't know like you know what maybe like the not healing or maybe them going through something awful is going to bring to whatever do you know like yeah. situations of fat i don't know but i thought that was really cool that's yeah. really cool i'm yeah. uh, that's really cool that he, he would say that to you that's really i know cool. i know i was like and all he just kept saying it like over and over and i was like i have to stop you for a second because that's <laughs> what we've been talking about you know and it, yeah. it was just kind of it was a confirmation that's to really me, cool at least yeah that's, that's very cool. That's good to hear. Thanks, Meg. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to um, share one last screen here. Okay. All right. Uh, actually, let me see if I can move this over. I don't know if I can. Here it is. This is nothing more than a timeline. You guys see this timeline? timeline? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to be right over here in Daniel 4. So here is the timeline. This, I again, there's no act, there's no great whether this is entirely accurate. It's as best as I think people can do based on history. Um, so far, what we've done, if you see at the bottom, Nebuchadnezzar became king over here on the left at six six oh five. I think that would be documented, uh, and you can see that's Daniel one from six oh five to like he thinks the three years. And it's somewhere at 6.02. Uh, he has Daniel 2, which is after they finished their three years, occurring, in essence, before the three years ended. And I just made a little line thinking it's probably over here because it was three years they had been in some type of almost like that Babylonish school. Um, so I just thought it's probably over here, maybe 01, 601, or maybe six, uh, 600. But anyway, so we continue on. We did last week, um, Daniel 3, which, again, history says it's probably like 687, 15, 13, 18 years. We're not sure. But we do know, at least I think history has said the temple was destroyed in eight, 586. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing now, uh, we're moving on to Daniel 4, which is probably somewhere 18 to 20 Wait. years later. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Wasn't Daniel brought over as after the destruction of Jerusalem? No, he, I, he, he wasn't. Oh, I, you know, it's weird. I thought he came after the chapter, the last chapter in Jeremiah that talks about when uh when jerusalem was completely invaded and raised and everybody was killed i thought he was brought over then i think what happened was because i have other timelines here but i just made a simple simple i didn't make it i just used the one that was simpler i have ones that have the ministries of like you know daniel listed at the bottom and then they have ezekiel and then they have jeremiah 
And what happened was Daniel came with the first wave here in 605. And then um, some one of the kings that was put in charge of the city of Jerusalem disobeyed Nebuchadnezzar. So Nebuchadnezzar sent troops back in eight or 586 and destroyed the whole lot and destroyed the temple. And I think took everybody or if he left anybody, it was just a, such a small group. So where was Jeremiah? Where was that last chapter in Jeremiah? Where does it fit in that timeline? Uh, right I, there? I could, I tell you what, let me, let me look at this one here. No, that's the same one. Let me look at uh, this one. See if. No. Can you increase that? It's not in meant? here. You can just no. make it bigger on your phone or your. I don't have my phone. Oh. Um, I don't, I don't have it, but okay. I know that, um, I know that like, I think is either Ezekiel or I think Ezekiel didn't come until like 586. And I don't know where Jeremiah fits, where he began and ended. Jeremiah saw the complete destruction at the very end. Remember he was there and P and he documented exactly what happened when the King was dragged away and, his eyes were gals, gouged yeah. out. Wasn't that Jehoiakim? It probably was. I, I haven't read that in a while. I think it was in the other timeline. I think that he must have then been one of the ones that was left behind um, and was still in Jerusalem. Because I can remember Jeremiah writing letters to his brethren in Babylon. Um, and then eventually he... I guess he gets taken away, or maybe he's left. I don't remember 586, but this is what he witnessed here. Uh, Daniel didn't witness that with his own eyes, though. Jeremiah oh. did. Ezekiel may have witnessed it because in some of his prophecies, he was in Babylon by the river Shabar or whatever it was. So he was also in Babylon, but whether he went at 586 or 50 or 605, I really don't know. Huh. So, it looked uh, like when I just Googled timeline for um, timeline for Jeremiah, it says um, Jehoiakim. Uh, how do you say? Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim becomes nine. Um, Jeremiah delivers his temple sermon in six oh five. In six oh four. Jehoiakim becomes a vassal of Babylon, and then Jehoiakim rebels against Babylon in 601. And then um, Zedekiah becomes king in 597, and Jeremiah urges Z Zedekiah uh, to Babylon in 594. Zedekiah? And yeah, that that's who I was thinking of. I was thinking of King Zedekiah is the one who had his eyes gouged out. Yeah. And then Jerusalem falls in 586. You know what always I don't understand is why they count backwards. I know when that was really happening, they were counting forwards. But I guess because it's BC, they count backwards. I don't know. It's very yeah, weird. That would be the reason. Yeah. It leads up to zero when we start a new timeline. Yeah. Obviously, at the time, they didn't do this. Right. No, no they right. didn't. I always look at this and think, they didn't count backwards. Right. Um, but yeah, um, it was the, it was Zedekiah. Zedekiah. Yeah. Zedekiah. Yeah. I, I think God had warned whoever the king was at that time frame, just before it was destroyed, that they were not to rebel against Babylon. And also, they weren't supposed to use. I think Egypt as the, as some assistance to help them, they were supposed to obey Babylon. So God had warned even the people that were left, I think certainly through Ezekiel, I remember reading that not that long ago. So we are going to start in four. Uh, it seems, again, a lot of these numbers, a lot of the timelines will read if you look at other people, so they're all different because nobody knows. So some people say that this Daniel 4 occurs before 7 or recur, occurs a little closer to 570, 586. Um, but 
it seems that Nebuchadnezzar dies in 562 and his son takes over. So what we'll begin to see is Daniel's ministry, which seems to start around 602-ish, continues on through like further kings all the way down over here to past the fall of Babylon, if you can see. So we're starting on the, on the left. We started time sequence wise, Daniel 1 two, three, and then four. And then whenever we get to five or six, they'll go out of order. But now we're somewhere oh. in this some in this time frame here. Oh yeah, that's weird, right? Yeah. Look at that. 20 years between Daniel three, Daniel four. It's that's not what, like every day he had something happening with him. Right. Right. Yeah, he was probably, yeah, probably was close with them, right? I mean relatively. Um, let's let's read uh, let's read Daniel four one through four. Yeah, we'll go as far as we can. Okay. Okay, I'll read. King Nebuchadnezzar, to the nations and peoples of every language who live in all the earth, may you prosper greatly. It is my pleasure to tell you about the miraculous signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom. His dominion endures from generation to generation. Do you want me to read through four? Yes. Nebuch I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at home in my palace, contented and prosperous and prosperous. Okay, so Nebuchadnezzar seems to have reflected since the last time, since last chapter. He's reflected a little. And he seems to have come up with slightly different conclusions in some areas, not completely all accurate, but um, he, he seems to think the most high God shows him signs and wonders, which he does. But what would be the signs that he's that we think he's seen? Like that he's going to be the be a big kingdom. Yeah. So he saw that how <clears throat> it's a dream. Yeah. Right. And he also had in tandem with the dream, some of the things seems to be more vision. So I think those would be the signs that he seemed to, to be the sign, the, the dreams and visions, but what would be the wonders that the most high God has showed him? Well, he did witness up in the fiery pit okay. and he noticed a fourth person in there. Okay. That's good. That's pretty wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. So what else? Uh, he was really, he, like, um, the, or no, I guess <laughs> prosperous because his, uh, I don't remember what's in his land was really, pro wasn't it? Like, wasn't, yeah, he got bigger, right? He, yeah. He up being bigger. Well, one of the things we could say in chapter, I think, two, uh, he does this unrealistic thing where he requires his wise men to tell him the dreams. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the interpretation. So that True. would certainly be a wonder, I'm sure, that Daniel, God, was the only one that did that. Right. So those are ones that are recorded. So um, it's, he says, great are his signs, mighty are his wonders. Now, another thing that God did, which probably was shocking to Nebuchadnezzar, was what did he, what did he do in the last chapter he well let me say this again in verse in chapter two it said he was given the kingdom in chapter three nebuchadnezzar said well the kingdom's mine i'm going to make such and such with it and the three guys said uh no we're not bowing down so one of the things that he witnessed is that the all most high god has the ability still to do what In, in regard to Nebuchadnezzar, who was evidently given the keys to the kingdom, what is Most High God still able to do? He's more powerful than never Nebuchadnezzar. Right. So he's able to overrule Nebuchadnezzar, despite Nebuchadnezzar supposedly being, being given the keys to the kingdom or whatever. Which probably blew his mind. Right. So it's probably he views that as a wonder. Here's another couple things. <laughs> 
he says the kingdom's <laughs> everlasting and his dominion is from generation to generation. Now, um, I wonder where those, the kingdom is everlasting and the dominion from generation to generation came from. Because remember in the last chapter, we saw he didn't seem as if he was going to wait generations upon generations. He was going to do it himself. And one of the things he may have learned is what about God? God has his own timetable. Yeah. And it's much greater seemingly than what Nebuchadnezzar thought it was. And he trumps him when he jumps ahead of him in some regard. He trumps them and puts, I don't know if he put a stop to it, if he certain allowed his people not to bow down to the, the staff. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's something else. Um, I lost my thought with this. He realized the various metals in the statue must represent the kingdoms through a long stretch of time, would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think he figured that out? I think maybe it crossed his mind, but the, the words perpetual and his kingdom is everlasting didn't seem as if he was wanting to wait at all or be patient. Yeah. And here he is. Um, now, one of the things that's interesting is Nebuchadnezzar says, I was, he says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, in verse four, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. So what seemingly is happening in, in his kingdom years down the line from where we just saw in the timeline? Say it again. Nebuchadnezzar says, I never, he, he evidently writes, seems to write this chapter. He says, yeah. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. Um, so if he's at rest in his house and flourishing in his palace, seemingly what's going on in the kingdom? They're prosperous. There's no, they're at peace and they're yeah. prosperous. Yeah, they're peace, they're, they're at peace and, and, and they're prosperous. Um, so maybe, and, and, and one of the things we'll see is he says the most high God is much bigger than he realized. And also all the little gods, I, I suspect, because he's still, we're going to find he still believes in the little guys, that that the most high seems to trump. Okay. Um, so let's read five through seven here. I'll read it. Um, I had a dream that made me afraid. As I was lying in the bed, the images and visions that passed through my mind terrified me. So I commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be brought before me to interpret the dream for me. When the magicians, enchanters, astrologers, and divines, I told them the, the dream, but they could not interpret it for me. So he has a dream. It frightens him. He calls his wise men. We've seen this before, right? He calls us, what I have is magicians, is enchanters, and it's soothsayers. Uh -huh. So the interesting thing is in Daniel 2, what, at, at the other dream, the word soothsayers weren't part of the group, right? They, really? They weren't summoned, or if they were, they weren't summoned by that word. Yet in Daniel 2.27, same in the other chapter where he had a dream and he was angry at all his wise men there daniel mentions them as those people along with the wise men and the enchanters and magicians as those that were unable to reveal the secret so they're included in one passage but not in the other i don't know why so i don't know what the point did something change but he, again, is, is once again looking to find out what his dream means. So if somebody wants to read the next two. Eight, nine. I'll try. Sorry. Um, okay, finally, Daniel came into my presence and I told him the dream. He is called... 
Belteshazzar after the name of my God, and the spirit of the holy gods is in him. I said, Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you, and no mystery is too difficult for you. Here is my dream. Interpret it for me. Uh, Daniel to the rescue. Now, I wonder why he didn't come in with the other wise men. Why, didn't Dan why did Daniel not come in with those guys? In fact? I feel like Daniel kept himself separate. That yeah. he wasn't a uh, part of their group and wasn't their buddies. Um, he was separate from them. Right. He was he, the chief of the magicians. Right. He was, he was in charge. At, oh. the, at the end of chapter two, he was made basically the boss. And, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's Nebuchadnezzar's description of Daniel. He's the master of the magicians. He made him the master. He says, the spirit of the most holy God is in me. Or actually, mine says the most holy gods. Does anyone have that? In verse um, yes. And spirit of the holy gods is mm -hmm. in him. So I, yeah. I wonder, why, he, I wonder why he says God, God's there. But earlier he said God, or did he not? I, and I don't know that enough to say what he did or didn't say but he clearly believes more than one god but he describes daniel's no secret troubles him which we seem to know that but who is dan who is nebuchadnezzar's god belteshazzar that's the daniel. name he gave daniel he said what it was his god and he named and daniel after after the name his of god. my god is what he said belteshazzar which i think the God's name is Bel. I think that's wow. the Babylonian God that he, he says he's evidently a, a lesser God, but he refers to them as, as his God. Now, uh -huh. um, here's another thing. Nebuchadnezzar says to, to Daniel, he says, tell me the visions of my dream and tell me the interpretation as well. So does he, again, ask here, at least in verse 9, the second half of 9, does he ask for both the dream and the interpretation again? No. He tells him the dream because he remembers it this time and, and asked him to interpret it. True. He told, because he just told the other wise men, but the end, my, mine says, tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Does it? That's what mine says. Um, I think, or I was, I was scratching my head because I, I, I don't think that it's that's what that meant, but that's what it says. And if you look the word up, you get far, far enough down, and the word actually does mean uh, tell. But I think some interpretations say that it's he means hear the interpretation of my dream which makes sense right because he's telling daniel why would he withhold yeah, mine it? says in seven and eight that he told he told both the magicians enchanters astrologers and diviners he told them the dream and then they couldn't interpret it and then he told daniel the dream yeah my I would imagine that that's true. I'm just saying the version that I'm reading says, tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen. And for whatever reason, you're like, well, why would he say that? Why we wouldn't he say, listen, or hear the version of the dream that, that I had, the vision of my dream. Or maybe in that day, that meant, tell me what that means. Who the heck knows? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not sure either. Um, Okay, let's move on to the first, uh, the 10 through 12, if somebody wants to read that. Meg, are you there? She stepped out for a minute, I, I think, unless she's yeah. invisible now. She may be invisible. Meg, Meg, are you invisible? Nope, okay. I think she stepped out. I think I saw a cushion move. <laughs> <laughs> Not there, I think. <laughs> All right, these are the visions I saw while lying in bed. I looked and there before me stood a tree in the middle of the land. 
Its height was enormous. The tree grew large and strong and its top touched the sky. It was invisible to the ends of the earth. Its leaves were beautiful, its fruit abundant, and on it was food for all. Under it, the wild animals found shelter and the birds lived in its branches from every creature and from it, every creature was fed. Did you say it was visible from the whole earth? Is that what you said? Or just say invisible? You said, you invisible. said invisible, but I know she meant visible. Did so I say you... invisible? It was visible to the ends of the earth. Okay. Okay, so he sees a tree. Whatever reason. Megan's invisible. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said it. So he sees it in the midst of the earth, a tree with great height. Uh, the tree grew, was strong. The height reaches to heaven. Uh, it's seen by the whole earth. The leaves, again, there's so much symbolism here. The leaves and abundant fruit. And it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade. The birds of the heaven lived in the branches. And all flesh was fed from it. Um, question. And we're not talking about interpretation. We're just reading it. But what's the difference in it? between this and verse 12, which says, uh, in it was food for all, and at the last part of verse 12, which says, and all flesh was fed, fed from. What's the difference? Aren't they saying this is not redundant? Sorry, sorry. Um, I don't know. It sounds redundant to me. Yeah. It does sound. It does sound. I thought it sounded redundant. So I, again, not going into any meaning. That was one of those things that I said. I wonder why he says, says that twice, unless he's talking about a different kind of flesh that's fed from it. But again, I, I'm not saying I, we're not talking about that, but. Well, I mean, he says food for all. And then he says every feet creature was fed. So what's the difference? You're well, right. maybe he's just telling you it grew all the food. And then uh, the last line was the food fed everybody. Okay. It could, could certainly could be. Yeah. Um, okay, 15, 13 through 15. I can still not there. 13 through 15. In the visions I saw while lying in bed, I looked and there a holy one, a messenger coming from the heaven. Sorry, my footnote says, or watchman coming from the heaven. He called in a loud voice, cut down the tree and trim off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the animals flee from under it and the birds from its branches. 15 too? Yeah. But let the stump and its bound with iron and bronze remain in the ground in the grass of the field let him be drenched with the dew of heaven and let him live with the animals among the plants of the earth so we huh. see that we see it, you know some some bibles in 13 well we're already down to 10 minutes some some say that it's uh, it's one a watcher slash holy one. Some seem to refer this as maybe multiple ones, but it could be an and or there. But they say chop the tree down, cut off its branches, shake off its leaves, scatter its fruit, let the beast flee from under it, uh, let the birds flee from the branches, leave the stump of its roots in the earth, bound the band of iron and brass amid the tender grass of the field, and let it or him or the stump be wet with the dew of heaven. So somebody want to do the next two verses, 16 and 17? Let his mind be changed from that of a man and let him be given the mind of an animal till seven times pass by for him. The decision is announced by messengers 
the holy ones declare the verdict so that the living may know that the most high is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes and sets over them the lowliest of people. Okay. In, in verse 15, which I know you read 16 and 17, but in 15, it says, it, it, changes, it changes from um, talking about let the stump and let the tree and to a, a let him or a let his portion be with the beast and in the grass of the field and continues on in 16, let his heart be changed from man's and let a beast heart be given to him and let seven times pass over him. So there's a change that seems to occur or more identification for whatever reason at this point. Um, and then 17, you read the, the sentence by the, the watchers or the holy ones. Um, it's in the intent is to, so the living will know the most high rules in the kingdom of men. And he gives it to whoever he will. And he sets it over the lowest of men. Or I think it, I think your verse is a little different. And I think it's probably right that he sets. Let me see what it says here. He sets over them the lowest of met people. Yeah, he sets over his kingdom. He puts, I guess, somehow in, in a headship position, the lowest right. of men, right? That's what I got from it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I got too. Okay, you want to do the next couple of verses? 18. And 19. Uh huh. This is the dream that I, King Nebuchadnezzar, had. Belts to Shazar. Tell me what it means, for none of the wise men in my kingdom can interpret it for me. But you can, because the spirit of the holy gods is in you. Then Daniel was greatly perplexed for a time, and his thoughts terrified him. So the king said, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or its meaning alarm you. Or <laughs> Cesar answered, my lord, if only the, the dream applied to your enemies and its meanings and, and its meaning to your adversaries. So the wise man can't interpret. Daniel comes in. Uh, the spirit of God is within, the, within him. And he is or hears it and is struck dumb and his thoughts troubled him. Why do his thoughts trouble him because he's thinking that this dream is about nebuchadnezzar being taken down right and so why would he be afraid why would he be afraid yeah i, I don't know because nebuchadnezzar could chop him up into pieces if I he was didn't say to and turn his family <laughs> into a pile of dung like he said he would do with all these other people Daniel, I'd be nervous to tell him the bad news. It's funny because Daniel is, you know, if you read these, these at least the first four verse chapters, you, you do begin to see Daniel using great wisdom. Right. Like almost like, like a yeah. politician. Yeah. Not, not that he lies, but he uses, he doesn't tell too much. He schmoozes it out. Hey, King, you're the head of gold. Like yeah. he always like he is. And even here, he's like, oh, let your enemies be. Uh, let this dream be to those that hate you and your enemies. And he always does that stuff. And he's funny because, yeah, you realize he's he knows how to play the game. He's very diplomatic. Oh, yeah. And even in, in the first chapter we read where he went to. I want to say it was the guy that was handing out the food who was saying, hey, oh, yeah. you, give, us, give us 10 days. And then he includes, he's like, give us 10 days. Originally, he was talking about him being the one to take the veggies and water. But then he yeah. expands it. And you're like, wow, he is very sharp on his feet. And knows he's really, to... he's yeah. a good politician. Yeah. He is. Hey, Mac. We, you know, we read up to 19 and unfortunately we have like four minutes left and we're going to stop there. 
but honestly, you know how these dreams are. Um, and there's so much symbolism in it. Like he's the tree, here's, there's branches, there's leaves, there's birds, there's beasts, there's stumps. There's the iron and brass again. There's dew of heaven. There's all kinds of stuff that seem to show up here. Uh, it sounds like a horrible time. Sheesh. I'm just, re I'm sorry, I'm reading the dream. No, the, no, no. The, yeah. Can I just ask a question? What? Sure. Is this recorded in history anywhere? The dream? Like, besides, besides in Daniel, like the time period where he was <laughs> the king, the king was let his hair grow long and was wandering in the fields with the mind of a beast. Like and he was eating grass like the ox <laughs> and drenched in dew in heaven for seven that, years. I, you know what I, I just I, wonder if it's recorded anywhere else besides in Daniel. I I think what you can find, and because I was I had the same thoughts um, about can you find this in a history book or some scholar somewhere discovered some little piece of text or something. And one of the things that it said was they discovered another guy who was a king and he had these, this period of time in his kingship where very little is mentioned of him, but it wasn't, his name wasn't Nebuchadnezzar. It was another guy. And, but they're not able to say whether there was, because they don't have any obvious clues in Nebuchadnezzar's um, life or ministry, or not ministry, in his kingship. But there, this other guy may. So there was all kinds of talk as to whether the other guy is really, well, you know, because you, you can get all these academic people in there that can skew the, the, the Bible. And at that point, it becomes, yeah, how much of this can I read? Because he, they're saying that this didn't happen or this happened with somebody else. And maybe it did. I don't know idea. But one of the other things they said, it, it doesn't matter who did it. Most likely the people that were the history recorders would never keep that because obviously their life would be in jeopardy. So they wouldn't write down history where, yeah, the previous king got, uh, he was depressed. And, yeah, yeah, he went nuts. So... To answer your question, I don't think they they can say for sh absolutely for sure whether that's true or not. But it does no, make. I, just, I googled it. They're saying they really can't. That that he did go mad, but there's no way to prove it. Yeah. That historians looked for years and years. But the other guy that I was made mention of, his name is sort of like ne Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar or something like that. Nabonidus. He yeah, it is something like that. He supposedly there's things that hint towards him having some type of uh, depression or something going on in his mind during a stretch, but it's not Nebuchadnezzar, so. Right. Ne what, what did you call him, Deb? Nabonidus. Right. In Arabia, the so sojourn of 10 years is clear. And that is true. That we're going to we're gonna get cut off in like 30 seconds, just so you know. Okay. We'll try and pick this up next week. Meg, I hope, you know, there's something in the last 10 minutes or so, 20 minutes that you could re-listen to. Yeah, yeah, I will. And then we'll try and interpret it based on what they say. And 